Mike Welsh, yes. Mike Ladbrother. <laughs> Welcome at the Moulin Blues Festival. Thanks. Thank you. Um, first of all, Mike. Yeah. Um, you've played at the Moulin Blues Festival quite a lot. You started here as a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, how many times have you been? Just here? once, actually. Uh, I, I, in 1996, mm -hmm. with the old Monster Mike Welch band, yeah. and then 2014 with Sugar Ray and the Blue Tones. Okay, so nothing in between. Nothing in between. Okay. And the, the, the joke I had at the time was that I was looking forward to it in 2032, mm -hmm. but uh, we actually made it back sooner than that. <laughs> so it's going to be a once every 18 year thing just for the you know, symmetry of it, but no, no, I'm glad we're back. Yeah, you've broken it, the symmetry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you don't, you don't mind. Oh, no, not at all. Well, this Moulin Blues was my first gig in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, it holds a very special place in my heart. Yeah, yeah. How much has your life changed since then? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I've I've been married for coming on fifteen or six, coming on sixteen years, and mm -hmm. I have a thirteen-year-old child, and <laughs> and I'm, you know, went from doing my own thing back then to joining Sugar Ray and the Blue Tones, and I stayed in that band a long time, and then I left last year to concentrate on working with Mike, um, and it feels like my entire musical life has been building up to what me and Mike are doing together now. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, as you said, you're here to tour with the album you made together. Mm -hmm. It's called Right Place, Right Time. I'm wondering who introduced you to, to, to one another? Well, I knew uh, Nick Moss, mm -hmm. uh, the band leader he worked with for many years. Um, and we actually ended up meeting um, in 2012 during Blues Music Awards week. There was a jam at the Room Boogie Cafe and I ended up playing with Nick Moss and Curtis Salgado and, and Curtis brought Mike, who I'd never met, mm -hmm. up on stage and pretty quickly he became my favorite singer in the world. <laughs> so. Okay, so then you just... <laughs> So then you just decided to make an album together, just like that? No. <laughs> no. Should I, should I take over yeah. now? Or? Um, well, the, the way that um, all of this came about was um, two years ago, the 2016 Chicago Blues Fest, um, Dick Sherman decided to put together the Otis Rush tribute. Mm -hmm. um, and that was pretty much the highlight of the entire weekend, the big you know, headliner and all of these, um, all, all of these musicians from Chicago and outside of Chicago were, were invited um, all over the country, all over the world pretty much because um, some people who had worked with Otis and some people who were deeply, in, obviously deeply influenced by him as well. Um, so he and I uh, ended up being paired together to uh, to do to do a song at at this tribute, um, and it ended up being it, like the the video kind of it went sort of viral like <laughs> like very quickly you know um, yeah and I, mean, I think last time I saw it had seventy something thousand views yeah more it it, it it was very heavy right from the get go and um, we had our performance and as soon as we got off stage we were getting. Pats on the back from you know all of the all of our heroes, right? Really. <laughs> you know Eddie the Chief Clearwater and Jimmy Johnson and all and and Lurie Bell and all of these people, Ronnie Earl, all of these people that we had, that we've known and loved our whole lives. Going, wow, you guys did a fantastic job, and yeah. a lot and a lot of them going, man, you guys got to do a record together just yeah. <laughs> just from that one performance, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. So we w we went away from that going. Yeah, we we might have to do a record together. Right. <laughs> when, when I got home from Chicago, because I live in Boston, I went home from Chicago, and you know, it was all I could talk to my wife about for a few days, and and you know, so so many times musicians play together and it's great, and you say, hey, we should really do something together, and then you never do it, mm -hmm. right. and this was just something that was so powerful. Um, and had made such an impact on us as well as everyone else that, yeah. you know, that, uh, you know, I started making phone calls 
to people, you know, hey, if you if we decided to do this, would you want to be involved like the record label and mm -hmm. people who provided financing and other musicians? Um, because I really didn't want to wait for this one. I didn't want this one to get away from us. Yeah. So you will have those songs lying about at your house because it all went so quick? Um, no, we I mean we we would we would call each other. Yeah. And you know, it it went from you know we we should really do this, man. To uh, you know what? Who would you who do right. we who would we want to play on this? And then we would kind of brainstorm there, and then we would go. You know what? Um, well, you know what kind of songs do we want to do? Right. And we would go back and forth with some of our favorite songs that that uh, you know neither of us had been able to record or right. or you know just songs that we love. So it was kind of a it was. It was a brainstorm and it went very quickly yeah you know we would say how about this one oh i love that song and uh, you know it was a it was a very every and, every time he suggested a song it was like oh yeah that's my favorite song yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, it was and it seemed like something that was very organic that we you know like how about this one that would be perfect for us to do together because what we found out at that chicago blues fest performance was um, he and I go at the same speed as an instrumentalist and as a vocalist mm -hmm. we're the same intensity speed his playing is y y we match each other mm -hmm. with our instruments right. yeah. I mean in, in, in a way that we hadn't experienced before so when we made those phone calls and said hey how about these songs Everything just came together quite naturally. Yeah. yeah. So, it, th there was <laughs> there was work, but no no real work put into. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, right. it was just so it it was it was almost too easy to be true. It was, it, I don't know. And and it was very much you know, as far as the cover songs, the conversation back and forth, it was very much like kids playing with toys. Right. What if we did this? You know. What if we did this? You know. Um, and even the originals, you know, uh, the next record is going to have more originals. I know Mike's been writing a lot, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, even before I heard his originals, he would say, you know, well, it's not going to be like this song, but, you know, kind of the feeling of like right. the Elmore James song, not because the song ended up sounding like that and it didn't sound at all like that. It was just so we were on the same page about this is kind of how we're feeling about our original song. This kind of groove. It's yeah. kind of it's kind of got this kind of groove, this kind of feel to it. And then that and would then, change, but it, right. at least it gave us the sense of, oh, this is the shape of the record we're making. It was the yeah. format. It was what, you know the blueprint of everything. Mm -hmm. So the second album is definitely coming. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we are right now in the process of. Um, figuring out how and when and what's going to be on that record and we are talking to some people um, mm -hmm. you know we have some meetings scheduled mm -hmm. um, and you know things are in the works th things are definitely in the works yes. but we also you know we also have this new band in the states um, the, the Welch Ledbetter connection, which has, you know, it's great musicians, but it's going to be very different than the first record because that was people we assembled, yeah. like some of our favorite players, a bunch of my favorite players from around Boston. Um, Mike brought in Ronnie James Weber, who's one of the world's real great bass players and one of our favorite people. Mm -hmm. um, so the next time we go in, we're going to go in as a band, which is a slightly different thing. Um, and, you know, it would have been easy to sort of throw together part two of the same kind of record. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we really both want to do it right. Mm -hmm. You know, this record still has life to it. We're about to go to Memphis where between everything, we've got seven Blues Music Award nominations, um, which is overwhelming and feels yeah. weird to say out loud. <laughs> but, you know, we feel like this record still has some life and when the second record hits, you know, it won't be a rush job. We're really going to do it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take your time and... Yeah. <sighs> yeah, th yeah. 
you want to do something right, it's worth taking your time with. That's you right. know, yeah. I mean, people always kind of go up to you and say, "When's it coming?" You know, mm -hmm. "When's it? When's that?" You got to get that next one out. Oh, we'll right. Get the next one out when it's when it's ready and yeah. uh, right. and when it's up to our standards. Right. You know, I, we're we're not going to going to just throw something. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we're not going to put half effort into anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's not our style. Yeah. Um, I've got a question for you. Mike. Okay. Um, I hope I have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I read somewhere that you sing or sang opera. Is that right? That's, that's correct. Do you have you have a training when you train your voice? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I trained several years uh, classically in Chicago mm -hmm. under uh, tenor Carl Lorenz. He was a held in tenor in mm -hmm. Germany for many years, and I had a, a ten year career as a operatic tenor yeah. in Chicago. So yep. that sounds a bit strange that you change to more contemporary it, uh, music. Well, here's the thing about it. I grew up, you know, I was born in 1985. I grew up listening to just about everything. First off, I've got a sister that's 10 years older to, and than me, so you know, whether it was 80s pop and boy bands and, you know, going into the 90s and listening to pop and R&B, that's, uh, you know, and, and my father, who's a huge B.B. King fan, so that's where I kind of got my blues knowledge yeah. from. Yeah. Um, I grew up singing everything. It wasn't until I was a teenager that I really got into classical music. Um, but I, I do understand that, you know, singing, singing, as an operatic tenor and then going straight from there to singing blues music may seem far-fetched to a lot of people mm -hmm. but um, to me it's not really it's th there wasn't much of a change at all because most of my favorite singers in opera were the people that had the most emotion in yeah. their singing mm -hmm. uh, Maria Callas uh, my favorite singer of any singer of all time like if you if you ask me you know, who, you know, if you got to listen to one singer for the rest of your life, yeah. Maria Callas, yeah. it, 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 without question, without hesitation, um, she was, you know, criticized a lot in her career for not being the most technical singer, but, you know, she sacrificed some of that technique for the emotion and yeah. the, the expression that mm -hmm. she had, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know listening to singers with so much emotion and expression in, in, in the classical world is really no different than listening to the most expressive singers in the blues world for me. Yeah. It's, all yeah. about, it's all about telling the story and channeling the music to the person and making them go, oh, mm -hmm. you know? That's all I want to do when I, when I sing. I just want to reach somebody's heart, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to be known as a, a a guy with a beautiful voice and you know can sing fancy stuff. I want to hit people here, you know. I want to tell them tell them a story, and if I can make them go, ooh, you know, just like my favorite th singers do to me, mm -hmm. then I'm doing my job, and it's no different in any genre. So, I mean. It really wasn't difficult going from classical to blues. It, there, you know, there are some. I can't sing like an opera singer when I'm on stage, but you know, it, it's it's all about telling the story. Yeah, but well you have to use different techniques. Oh yes, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still, you know, I still warm up with the same techniques that I did when I was singing opera. I still, you know, before every performance, I still do the same thing. Yeah. I just don't sing quite the same way yeah. you know I, you know you gotta you gotta adapt yeah. <laughs> to what you're doing you know well and where i feel like it where i feel like it comes out is more than any singer i've worked with mike is precise with his choices um he's able to make the choices that will hit the audience the hardest it's the it's actually some of the most impressive use of technique I've seen because he almost never does it. I mean, there are big falsetto notes sometimes and big notes, but it's almost like he uses he uses his technical training to sing more simply and efficiently. Mm -hmm. Just you know, it, it it he doesn't have to 
he's got choices about how he's going to tell you the story. Yeah. You know, and that's that's amazing to me. That's you know, I don't. I've never met a singer with that level of skill who also has the taste and knowledge to know how to use that skill just to be as effective as possible. That's, I mean, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a different kind of musical thinker than most people ever get to be. Mm -hmm. It's really <laughs> impressive to me all the time. Yeah. Well, I say the same thing on stage about his guitar playing. There have been several times, you know, on this tour where I'll be introducing him and I'll say, look, he doesn't have to play a million notes, but he can play one and hit you right here. He just, it, you know, he doesn't have to play a million notes. He just plays all the right ones, you know? And that's, that's what music is about, you know? Yeah. That's, that's what telling a story is about. It doesn't have to be fireworks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes fireworks are the best way to tell the story. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the other thing, like, you know, it's not, you know, simplicity is not the only option but you know. we all have the choice and you know when it's you just have to know where to do it and I think yeah. that's what makes us you know such a strong combination is we we do that for each other right yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would like to talk a bit about the tour you've been doing yeah yeah excuse me uh, it's okay <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you've um, how long have you been in Europe so far it um, will be three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We leave on Monday. Okay, you're going back to the states. Yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, how's it been? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Um, like I was saying before, we, you know, we were over here with uh, with Soul Shot, um, one of one of France's, you know, mm -hmm. finest backing bands. You know, they they bring some incredible musicians from all over you know, to come play with them all over. I could, you know, other than our our own band in the States, you know, we come over here and I don't think I could ask for more from a backing band. The, the performances from performance one to now have just just climbed the ladder up, 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 up and up. Yeah. It's, it's something else. Something. They're great listeners. So, yeah. you know, and that's such an important thing. It's a conversation and it's built into something bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's been really great and really inspiring every single night. Sure. So it will be a great show then tonight. That's the idea. That's, yeah, 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 hopefully, okay. you know. Looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> so are we. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the interview. Oh, thank you. Oh, no problem. Our pleasure. Yeah.